My name is Jiung Lim from Puste, and I'd like to introduce uh, Professor Jiung Lim from Academia Tinker uh, in Taiwan. He will, he's an expert in uh, STM fluid electron system. So he'll uh, talk about the direct visualization of electronic liquid crystal phases in fluid topological semiconductor. So let's welcome this. Thanks for the uh, introduction by Ji Hun. Uh, and I'd like to thank the organizer for having me uh, in uh, this wonderful meeting. Uh, and I'd also like to thank the Hudovic uh, Chinese Society uh, to help me arrange for the traveling. Uh, so um, my name is Timmy. Uh, this is how Google tell me my name is written in Korean. Uh, I don't know if this makes any sense. Um, so I'm from Taiwan. Um, so. Um, uh, Ji Hoon and I actually went to uh, grad school together, and which is why I got invited. I guess. <laughs> uh, so this is a uh, um, so I, I like to present this uh, a story for the very first time, I guess, uh, to the large audience. Um, so if you um, if I'm going too fast with the you know um, like over I to the I I think I don't want to like go into much detail uh, with the like a, a long introduction. So you feel free to if you have any questions, feel free to stop. Them. Anytime. Um, so, um, so before I start, I'd like to thank my uh, student and my collaborator. So these are the uh, hardworking student and Costa in my group, and the sample is by uh, made by the uh, Senka in our institution, and um, also we have a TEM expert to categorize the structures, and then we have also have a theorist. Who provide uh, AB initial uh, calculation support and also modeling simulation and also uh, um, and uh, Yoshi here is uh, providing uh, support to categorize the composition of uh, our crystal as I will show you is extremely sensitive to uh, the crunch disorder. And I also also like to thank the uh, funding agencies. Okay, so um, I think we all know that quantum material research is a very hot topic. Um, just uh, to give you some idea. Uh, so of course, uh, we are sort of in the strongly correlated electron system business. And then so in these system, charge, spin, and orbital, and lattice, those are the degree of freedom they interact strongly with each other. And that would give you a lot of uh, uh, normal property. Um, at the same time, we also have topological system uh, here, the uh, non-trivial topology would give you rise the uh, symmetry protected uh, surface state or edge state, uh, and it also extends to like uh, semi-metal system um, that um, those are uh, symmetry enforced uh, direct crossing or wire crossing will also give you uh, a lot of exotic property. But usually, those two uh, systems they don't uh, overlap with each other, meaning that most of the topological system that we understand right now. Uh, um, can easily be described by the um, uh, simple non-interacting uh, uh, th uh, theory. So uh, this is one of the things that uh, people at this spring from this are trying to push to find a correlated topological system. And um, just to give the student in the audience some idea that there are many uh, interesting material in the strongly correlated electron system, like for example, the insulating uh, system and then high TC superconductor condo and uh, later we will have a talk from uh, uh, tomorrow we will have a talk about, about the condensing liquid multifluid and then also very hot topic related to the twist bidiography and the signature of the core system is a complex uh, phase diagram so they are very sensitive to uh, the chemical composition uh, carrier density magnetic field uh, also, external pressure, and so on. Um, so, with these uh, 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 features of, of property, then we can actually uh, use a lot of uh, external um, stimulus to tune the property of this uh, uh, system so that it also uh, provide a, a good opportunity for real application. Um, and so there is a, a, a another motivation for from the theoretical point of view, and this is also like a published uh, so summarized in this paper 
So uh, here you can actually tune the strength of the uh, topological system by tuning the spin orbit coupling. And then here you can also tune uh, the uh, correlation strength. So if this you- is, uh, This is for some kind of a Hubble model, yeah? Yes, yes. Right. So uh, you can actually see that there's a possibility that you can create some kind of exotic phase uh, if you combine these two um, in the same system. And then in fact, uh, especially there has been uh, like discovery of uh, axiom insulator and wild semi metal. Um, so this is the main uh, motivation for the, the experimental search for the correlated uh, topological system. So the question is uh, where to find it. Okay, um, and um, so as I say, we will, um, so I'll give you some like uh, quick overview, uh, but not to mention, not, not to be complete. Uh, one is a, a sort of experimental focus right now in several systems. So one of the system, of course, is the KTAF on the spin liquid system. And um, I think the, the main um, uh, interest coming from this uh, particular a result from um, Matsu Sensei uh, in Japan, and then so they were find they, they by using the uh, thermal transport measurement, they will be able to find this uh, evidence of a Mariana Fermi. Um, but for me, I'm a scanning tunneling uh, microscopy guy, and unfortunately, this system is uh, insulating, so we cannot do any experiment, uh, and it's very difficult measurement for the thermal uh, measurement anyway. So um, unfortunately, we we uh, we can work on that particular system. But so there are other systems we would like to explore. And uh, as you also know, the uh, Kagome system is also very uh, popular right now. In this system, um, the uh, spin is arranged in the Kagome uh, uh, lattice, and then you here you will actually have the uh, not only you had a protected direct crossing, and then you also had a flat bend. Okay, and there are a lot of uh, discussion in terms of symmetry, simultaneous uh, symmetry breaking in those system. Uh, so these are also very uh, 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 interesting materials. I'm, I'm sorry, um, may, I, may I please comment on this? Oh, sorry. It's kind of an electronic band structures or what is this energy momentum dependence of what? Uh, yes, this is a band structure. Yeah, just a kind of cut to the picture of this uh, particular I think system, right? Just to show you there is a, a direct band structure and also flat band in these uh, systems. Um, and we know um, the top, uh, iron based superconductor is also one example. There's a correlated system, and uh, in these two material, uh, they are also topological surface state. So it's uh, another interesting material for topological superconductivity. Um, and of course, people try to explore the condo, condo, uh, topological condo insulator in these uh, systems. Um, and further, you can also introduce magnetism or charge density wave uh, combined with the um, uh, topological semi-metal. And uh, then, for example, here you can actually find the, for example, for this particular structure, you can find the axion uh, then it, uh, insulating state. Um, and in this case, then uh, by using CDW, you can uh, create a wild uh, fermion state. Um, the, the list can go on and go on. So the question is uh, what other platform uh, we can actually explore? Um, so in this case, uh, today I'll focus, mainly focus on this particular uh, non symorphic uh, direct nodal line semi metal. And uh, the, the sim this theoretical uh, picture is actually proposed by Yang and Ken in this paper, PIL. So basically, uh, if you play with the non symmetric uh, symmetries, you can create a band folding. For example, this is a, a P orbital. So if you have a non symmetric symmetry, you fold the one zone, and then you create uh, the direct crossing protected by the non symmetric symmetry here. Uh, so this is the basic idea. Uh, and um, so the most uh, famous example is uh, this so-called zirconic silicon sulfide uh, by uh, Les Ishu, uh, who is now in Princeton. Um, so um, in, this is the uh, band structure of this system. So um, in around the Fermi level, there will be a lot of uh, uh, direct cone already. 
to me, uh, but these are protected by the mirror symmetry. Um, so if you consider the spin orbit coupling, they will open up a tiny gap uh, at the very low temperature. And um, the real uh, symmetry protected uh, crossing is uh, this blue one. And then so they are sitting at the zone boundary here. Okay. Um, but it also has an unusual uh, uh, Fermi surface. The Fermi surface uh, is contained this uh, 2D and then 3D uh, Fermi surface. So uh, if you perform the magnetic transform measurement, you will see this uh, uh, strong butter or signature butterfly uh, exotropic magnetic resistance. Um, and uh, so these are the basic uh, feature of this particular system. Um, and there are already signs of the uh, electron uh, correlation effect in this particular family. Um, and typically uh, is done by uh, optical measurement. Um, so they actually see uh, if electron mass uh, is enhanced either at the very high field or um, uh, in the uh, uh, optical conductivity measurement. Okay. Then these are, these are effects are sort of related to this uh, unique uh, Fermi surface that we just saw. And, um, and the interesting part, the reason that we want to explore this particular family is that you, know, you can actually replace this uh, uh, three element in many different uh, compounds uh, in the periodic tables. So one of the proposal, uh, similar proposal by Chin LC's group is in this paper is uh, also exploring this uh, non symmorphic symmetry to create a, a, a protective uh, bank crossing and, and also introduce a correlation effect by including these uh, lengthening families. And so these are also our uh, idea. But we want to, uh, in this paper, they use a, uh, they, they propose a very complicated um, compound. Um, and here we want to explore this uh, particular uh, zirconium silicon families by including the uh, lengthening element, lengthening elements. So um, the, there is an example here, which is the cesium antimony terrorite. And this big, when you introduce the cesium, then immediately the system becomes antiferromagnetic uh, at the, around three Kelvin. So by playing uh, the magnetic order in the system, um, this is a theoretical uh, pictures. So then you can actually change the space uh, symmetry of the system. And, um, and then, for example, you can lift the degeneracy of the direct crossing, and then you get to the wild uh, uh, semi metal state, for example. So you can actually control this uh, uh, band structure by using a uh, magnetic field, for example, or temperature. Um, so in our case, we want to be able to access this uh, magnetic transition a little bit easier. So we choose uh, gallodium antimony uh, terrorite. Um, with the same structure, but it has a slightly higher uh, neo temperature around, uh, so uh, NT permanent transition around 10 Kelvin. Okay, um, so these are the, the material system that we choose. Um, and it has a, 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 the main player is this particular uh, P orbital in the antimony layer, uh, which is uh, right here in the middle. Sorry right in the middle. So the, the main player is the P orbital in this uh, square lattice, okay? Um, okay. So um, there is an early paper by Hoffman in Cornell. Uh, they calculate the antimony uh, band structure. Um, and if you have the antimony um, lose one electron and then it form a very stable uh, network right here, structure here. But if you begin to dope the electron into this particular lattice, then you create a lat uh, higher instability, and then would drive the whole system toward uh, CDW phase. And then this would actually show up in this uh, phase diagram of this material. So if everything is uh, uh, it's like uh, perfect, the one 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 system, then it's a tetragonal and uh, no CDW in this blue region. But once you dope enough electron, then you drive the system into orthorhombic lattice distortion, and also in this region, you have an uh, incommensurate to commensurate CDW phase. Um, okay. So then we will try to study with the with this material with a scanning tolerance microscope, and it just give you, uh, this is just a machine that we built in our lab. Um, so I'll skip this. 
So we, we started this material um, by cleaning uh, in the USB, and then we, we look at it by scanning Tony microscope. And this is a surface, clear surface uh, at the heating temperature. So this is in the anti-ferromagnetic state. Um, and then you can see the individual atoms. And then the black one here, they are TE vacancy at the top surface. But um, also you can see, for example, they are dark area and then bright area. Uh, let me just uh, uh, remind you, these are not because the surface is rough. This is because the electronic state are inhomogeneous. So um, if you look at the uh, uh, STM picture of uh, many different correlated images, for example, Kubrick, these are the signature okay, of an uh, inhomogeneous electronic state of the system. But the surface is uh, atomic these tools. Okay. So if we zoom in, uh, you can also see these uh, like dark patches or bright patches, and then also the uh, Turing uh, vacancies. Okay, and then these just the, the uh, spectrum of this particular system, which oh, this is not completely gap. This is the finite depth of the state, but there's a huge uh, like a sort of like a uh, gap-like structure here. Okay. Um, so unfortunately, the movie doesn't play. So what we do is uh, we, we take the uh, uh, Townley spectrum at individual atomic position at the different energy. Then we construct it into a three-dimensional map. And um, so we, if we play this movie, uh, which is a dense of a state as a function of location, as a function of energy, you're supposed to see the quasi-particle scattering interference. There will be a lot of standing wave uh, moving as a function of energies. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't play, but uh, this particular one will play. <laughs> so uh, for some reason. So if we take the Fourier transform of that, and then we can extract the periodic signal, um, and then you can see a lot of uh, um, vector is moving as a function of energy. And, um, well, this system is very friendly for surface measurement, for example, STM and RPES. So many features we can already recognize from, uh, from literature, for example. We also take quite a bit of different compounds. Um, so let me stop one, at one particular energy, for example. There are features around here. So these particular four peaks, uh, I circle here. This is a, a Turin uh, uh, atoms uh, lattice. Uh, so we call it graphic in the Q space. But there are at the same time, several uh, so-called Q vectors that we can extract. And so once we extract this uh, uh, vector uh, in the momentous uh, space, we can compare, uh, for example, I just give you two examples. Like this particular one is the scattering uh, uh, vectors from this uh, surface state to this surface state. And these particular uh, vectors here is the uh, interband, uh, intraband scattering between this uh, uh, pocket. And so by following this uh, uh, dispersion of the vectors and then compare with the uh, BFT calculated band structure, um, we can compare and um, uh, the band structure uh, and verify that we indeed measure all these uh, uh, direct fermion uh, in the, um, the dispersion in the band structure. So this is basically uh, uh, consistent uh, with the um, the bench calculation of this material. And it just show you that indeed, uh, we actually have the uh, uh, topological bench structure in this uh, system in our measurement. Okay, so this is the uh, very first result. But I would like to direct your attention to the peak around the uh, atomic lattice peak. So these three blue peak, they, they show up in our images, but they uh, when they show up, they don't disperse as a function of energy. And that sort of caught our attention because when you see the peak, that means you have periodicity in the system. And in this case, they break the transversal symmetry and they don't disperse. So um, if we look at this particular topograph um, and, and you perform the Fourier transform, there's no such a peak in this image, it's not in the surface. So that already tell you that this is related to the electronic state. So if we change the bias to um, positive one volt, okay, in the same field of view, um, and you immediately see a messy uh, surface coming out. So again, this is the electronic effect. Um, and then you can actually see uh, the pic showed up here. And at the same time, um, it's not very clear because of the noise, but they are also here. And these are the four pics 
And then if you multiply this uh, vector of the Unix cell, and then they would show up around here. So this is just a super modulation of this uh, uh, period. Uh, so we know we now know that there is a, a symmetry breaking in the system, but with a, we want to make sure this is not related to the lattice. Um, so we perform the uh, low temperature electron diffraction of the system, and then basically they, they don't show additional, they, it's just the tetragonal symmetries. Uh, and then also we, we look at the whole measurement and also the magnetic susceptibility, spectral key measurement, there is no additional translation is that uh, but there's no additional transition is that the uh, anti and transition that we already know. Um, so because of the additional symmetry breaking, and then this is uh, what we normally call the electron liquid crystal phase. Um, and for the student in the audience, this is sort of the bar, we, we borrow this concept from uh, the liquid crystal study um, so in the high temperature, you have a, a liquid phase. When you cool down, the system become crystalline. And, uh, but in the middle, um, you will have a so-called pneumatic and semantic. In the pneumatic case, then you break the, uh, trans, uh, break the rotational symmetry. Um, and, but in the um, semantic phase or stride phase, you break the additional translational symmetry. Um, so these are the two exotic uh, systems that we we, we know in the liquid crystal study, um, but because during the mod insulating uh, study, um, these three uh, physics, they actually propose that we can actually apply the same concept to the mod insulator. So um, for example, in the mod insulator phase, everything, the, all the electron is frozen, but, but when you begin to dump the system, you might actually dry the system into, for example, high TC uh, superconductivity or some kind of conducting surface, uh, uh, conducting phase. Um, but then in the middle, you can have in the underdog region, you can have a so-called stride phase or the pneumatic phase. And um, this has been realized experimentally in the cube ray, for example, by neutron or by STN. Uh, this is the uh, uh, symmetry breaking um, phenomenon. And then also we, we discover this pneumaticity uh, in the ion-based superconductivity. Uh, and along with the uh, magneto transport by the features with Jin Hao. Um, so these are very uh, important uh, phenomena in the high TC uh, study. And I will try not to get into the detail, but uh, just let you know that uh, in the underdog case, uh, when you dump the system, uh, just barely enough, you enter this so called the pseudo gap phase. And here you bury with the so called density wave. Uh, Deep on factor density wave. And then this is where we see all these uh, stride and also symmetry breaking in the STM and neutron and rigs, for example. Um, and uh, also in the underdog case, um, uh, for the uh, IPS parameter, you will see the so called uh, rotational symmetry pneumatic phase. Um, so these are considered very important for the parent symmetry uh, and the uh, parent mechanism of the high TC. So back to our uh, data. So if we actually isolate this for uh, features and then do the inverse force transfer, and we can actually see how it looks like in the real space. And this is uh, uh, basically the inverse force transfer of this uh, so the Q vector. And then we, just for simplicity, we call it a, a, a Q stripe, okay? Um, so we can further decompose this into um, two directions. So along one direction, it looks like uh, these particular uh, uh, patterns, and then along this direction, uh, it looks like this particular uh, pattern. Um, and further, um, just to to show because um, they are very close to the center of the these images, so there are some low frequency noise that we might influence our analysis here. So we actually take a larger field of view data and then we can actually zoom in in these uh, regions. Okay, and then this is what we do. So this is a much larger, like 250 nanometer field of view. And then you can actually see these uh, feature much more clear and uh, also in the first transform right here. Okay. Um, and again, we can decompose this into two directions and then we can further analyze uh, the phase of this uh, uh, charge modulation and you can see uh, the, uh, the topological defect with a different winding, okay? 
And of course, the natural question, the next question we will want to ask is uh, whether they correlate with the anything in the real space. But unfortunately, uh, there's just too many um, docking atoms in the system in our in this particular material right now. We have about ten percent of the doping. So in in the sense that it's just everywhere. <laughs> um, so can, can I? Oh, sorry. Yes. Sir. Oh, yeah. So how did you get his this basic information from? Oh. What kind of experiment? Um, so, so first of all, if you um, perform the uh, inverse for transform and you get this uh, real space, okay, so this is the tribute. But uh, to get the local face information, what you have to do is just uh, do the perform the uh, uh, local, uh, what can you do the local for transform around uh, this area, right? For example, a small, smaller window. And you would get um, uh, amplitude and as well as the phase. Then you had to calculate the phase of this complex uh, result. Then you would get the uh, the local phase, and then we then we do this in the in each pixels, right? And then you would get this particular result. So, so do this the different uh, corresponds to the like uh, margin of two stripes. Yeah, so, so for example, here you can see this, there is a Y here. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, um, yes, I mean, can, can we go back a little bit to understand what's going on? So, so you're the so you do the Fourier transform of the image to get the sort of the polyparticle of the image in brackets. And so can you go once, maybe two slides back? Okay, so here. So, and is this image on the left bottom? Right. Like, so you basically take these two points and then do Fourier transform to get that one. Right. And then you just a, uh, adding up those two things or is it a Fourier transform for all four points? So these are inverse first transform of all four points. All four points. And these this image is the inverse first transform of these two points only along these directions. Right. right. So, and so if you, you add, add these two, up, yeah, and you get and this. then you get that one. Right. Okay. Right. I see. Right. Okay. Um so then you are saying that so that is the Fourier transform, and then you take the inverse Fourier transform of that, and then you get uh, and I, I sort of you are sort of keeping the base information from yeah from, so from both of these uh, two right so this is just the amplitude of this uh, right. uh, stripe or the right. purple patterns but you can also extract the face information of this particular uh, pattern for example um, it was related to the question so for example um, you can see this uh, uh, waves sort of become like Y shape. And then split again, right? So there is a already by R, you can sort of guess there is a topological defense so there. I guess what I'm kind of so from the these two points, how do you get that? I guess that's I, I how do you the how do I get the face? No, I mean so I guess the real space image of so from here to here. Yeah, so you you're so are you doing just a free trust over two points or are you, is there more? So than that? so what we do is just uh, for example, I take these two signals right. only. The rest, I use a window to remove it. Okay. But just filter out, right? So only these two are left, and then I inverse first transform. Then how do you get all these wiggles information? Where is that coming from? Because the, this is the amplitude, and then there's a phase, right? So if you inverse first transform, you get this guy. Um, if you pick many, many points, you pick this area, then you will split another point. This area. You mean in the signature? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so there is a finite window because the, uh, uh, yeah, so this is roughly, yeah, is a circle. Right. Yes. So when you do the Fourier transform of, of the scattering intensity, mm -hmm. you get the correlation. Right. About the density. The correlation. What do you mean? Well, it's, it's, it's not a, a density. You're not measuring some density locally. <laughs> You're measuring the correlation of density, kind of zero within the bar. 
That's what the scattering intensity is the Fourier difference for both. Um, that's uh, for the QPI part. So uh, in order to extract the density uh, from these points, we have to know something about the phase. Yes, the phase uh, is encoded. I just show you the amplitude here. Because when we do the Fourier transform of the data, we will get the amplitude part and the phase the part. The intensity is a real number. Right, the real number, that's right. So you, you lose that phase of information. No, we don't lose it. It's in the separate images. I just didn't show you here. I'm not sure how, how it can be done because if you have a neutron scattering intensity, mm -hmm. that's the Fourier transform of a correlation function. Right. So I, if I were to understand this is a correlation function, mm -hmm. then it doesn't make sense to talk about topological defects because these. It's not a real space picture. It's a correlation that you extract from all these space pictures. So these are not the locations of these things. Um, well, um, this is rather technical. I don't know whether we have to continue right. this. Okay. Um, so, so, so I can uh, sort of explain it in the in the private discussion. Um, but yes, if you think about this uh, as a like a time domain uh, analysis, right? You. And we are just replacing the time domain into the real space domain. So you get this in the Q space. And then we just inverse red transform back to the real space. Basically, that's what it is. Okay. Um, but let, let me move on first. We can have more discussion over lunch. Um, so, so let me uh, bring your attention to some local effect. So um, for he here, if we zoom in more at the different energy in the same location, you can see some need a one-dimensional nanostructure along this direction and that direction, right? So there's some weird features show up as well. So uh, if we, again, this is related to the data analysis. So if we filter out all the periodic uh, vectors in the data set and then leave all the disorder part in the image and inverse voice transform, what we will see? And we will see this uh, crazy patterns and uh, I think if you look sit far away back and then look at it, you can already see some uh, linear structure this way and that way. Uh, but remember, there's no periodicity already because we remove yeah. more. And then if you zoom in, you can actually see locally they are linear uh, structure along this direction and that direction. Okay. Um, and this is the we measure the charge. So this is the linear. Um, uh, nanostructure in the electronic uh, structures. Okay, so if we sort of quickly summarize what we see in the long range part, we have something break the translational symmetry and then give you these uh, uh, real space pictures. And if we remove all the periodicity, locally we'll see these uh, 1D nanostructure in the real space that break the rotational symmetry, but they don't, <laughs> they don't break the translational symmetry. So there are two features exist in the system. And the question is where this symmetry breaking coming from. Um, but just like quickly let you know, they are sort of like very similar uh, to the QPRE and also the Inrate Day system. Um, so of course we are in the four Kelvin below anti ferromagnetic transition. So um, the question is whether this is related to anti ferromagnetic order or not. So we go about uh, near transition temperature to 20 Kelvin and these features will re remain. Uh, if we keep going to 40, just to get rid of, hopefully we are about the fluctuation temperature and uh, these uh, features still remain. Okay, just let you know quickly. Um, so now we sort of back to the disorder effect. So, because the system is 10% dope near the uh, phase boundary. So we're thinking, okay, what's the effect of this doping? Um, so if we, Go back to the symmetry of this system. So if you look at the unique cell of the system and look at the antimony part, this particular antimony atom in the center of the bluon zone uh, in, the, in the unique cell and then at the corner, you realize that they are not equal uh, in the sense that um, for this particular one in the center, if you look up, they uh, sort of have this uh, orientation like with the GD atom and T atom along this direction and then bounding they rotate 90 degrees toward the bottom, okay? And if you do the uh, uh, sort of charge density uh, calculation, uh, you will see this, if you dump the system, okay? 
uh, with the replace this particular antimony with the terrene atoms, and you will lower the charge density at the sur top surface, okay, and pick up by the STM. And if you dope this particular one, this one will actually have 90 degree difference um, between um, the one in the center. And then you will create a, another uh, impurity state by rotating 90 degree compared to this one here. Okay, so uh, these are the from the theoretical and geometric picture point view. So the question is, if we do 10%, what will happen? So the left-hand side is our data, the right-hand side is just a, like a sort of simulation. If we put in more and more, okay, sorry. Uh, so then you get something very similar, okay. Um, and the similar situation also happened in the ion-based superconductor that if you have, so we know in the ion-based superconductor, you dump the uh, iron with the cobalt, you create some kind of anisotropic uh, uh, impurity state. And then if you don't maybe 3% in this particular system, you create this crazy uh, 1D nematicity um, and also have a profound impact to the bed structures. Um, so we unfortunately, we able to grow very difficult, but uh, the, our collaborator managed to grow very clean uh, samples. And uh, so here we can isolate one particular impurity right here, and then indeed that they oriented like, uh, like become like a C2 symmetry. And then there's another isolated one somewhere around here, and you can also see they rotate uh, differently. Okay, so we, we do have a C2 impurity in the system, um, and then we can further uh, enhance the, the impurity state in this particular image by removing all the atomic uh, atoms. And then we can further correlate in the, if you have, then we can actually identify all the in the system. So this is only 2% though. And so if you actually look carefully, most of these uh, doping actually, uh, you can see, when you have more uh, doping atoms, you can see the patches of these, uh, uh, like a one dimensional uh, features more, but when you have less doping, then you become clear, okay? Just a uh, atomic lattice, more clean, uh, cleaner surface. So now we know this uh, doping atom plus a non symmetric symmetry is a peer to uh, create this uh, symmetry breaking uh, in uh, local, uh, locally, okay. Um, and these, uh, when you do the four, last, uh, four transform again, and uh, in the same energy that we're supposed to see this uh, strike pattern, but here in the cleaner system, they don't show up, okay. Only the uh, atomic pit. So there's no uh, strike uh, exists in this cleaner surface. Okay. So uh, this is a strong evidence that the quench solder play a very important role. Okay. So I have a few findings. So let me wrap up. So um, so if we look back to the Kipre study, and in the early days when the STM uh, uh, visualized this particular checkerboard patterns, there are already uh, two theories to, um, at the very beginning. Of course, they are later uh, study. So uh, in uh, Shashdev and uh, Kibosan's group, they already uh, have the similar idea that, um, because we know in the cuprate underdose uh, phase that there is an underground uh, CDW. Uh, and so what they do is that they take the CDW as a ground state and introduce a doping atom as a random field and let them interact with each other. So by manipulating the density, the intensity of the uh, random field, they can sort of uh, uh, simulate how the one-dimensional CW ground state can be driven into like a sort of stripe uh, uh, domain or the uh, checkerboard uh, uh, phase as such. Okay, so there is, this is the uh, uh, theoretical pictures. So working with an uh, engine and uh, in the, in, uh, um, they actually take our experimental uh, parameters and then simulate in the, they can use the doping atom as a, a random field uh, and create a similar uh, patterns uh, as we speak, uh, as we see in the STM. Okay, so um, this is a, just a nice agreement from the uh, theoretical model. Um, the next we are actually trying to do is try to figure out um, the system, as we, as I showed you, 
uh, the system can be decomposed into by inverse first transform to checkerboard pattern or two uh, stripe patterns. And it's just either 2D or 1D. So the question is, uh, so this is a very similar uh, uh, result in the QPRA. They, they take the icing model uh, simulation as, uh, as shown in the earlier paper, and then they further analyze that in the QPRA uh, underdog region, mostly they are stripe, not the checkerboard. Uh, so we are actually working on the similar analysis uh, just to figure out uh, in our system with a, uh, it's a from the theoretical point of view, it's a checkable or strike. Okay. Uh, but this is a quickly summarized uh, in comparison between uh, our result and then the QBRAIN. So in the QBRAIN underdog region, uh, at the low energy, you had this uh, local, delocalized quasi particle. And at the uh, above the pseudo gap energy, you get this uh, uh, frozen checkable pattern. Okay. And in our case, we have the coexistence of the delocalized uh, the Raframian plus uh, is a static uh, symmetry breaking uh, strike pattern as well as the uh, uh, local nematic patterns. Okay. And recently, uh, Hanagri group, they also report the D wave. Uh, if you have a D orbital uh, square lattice, and you can also have a spontaneous uh, symmetry breaking in this uh, semi metal, uh, direct semi metal system. Okay. Uh, so in summary, um, if we study this particular system uh, in the cleaning region, uh, we don't see any symmetry breaking. But if we look at the system uh, slightly up, uh, near the boundary, we will actually observe these uh, uh, electron liquid crystal phase. And these are a signature of the uh, electron correlation. Okay. And we further show you um, by uh, looking at the doping and then non symmetry symmetry, they can create that's the, the origin of this uh, symmetry breaking. So I, I think this also provide a very good comparison and uh, example for another, uh, for, for sort of understanding the electronic liquid crystal phase in a correlated system. So let me wrap up here and uh, take a few questions. Thank you. Any questions from audience? Um, Thank you, guys. It was uh, interesting. Um, so, uh, like, like the doping case, right? So, mm -hmm. um, so first of all, is this uh, looking at the antimony states or what are the states? I think it's this, so I guess gadolinium tundrum is the surface, and then um, I, I guess uh, how does the doping work? I guess that's a, oh, so okay. yeah, that's a good point. So, so the clean. Clip point, the crystal clip right here. So yeah. it reveal this uh, TE uh, atoms, but the doping actually go to antimony. So and it's the, electronic and antimony. Right. right. It's anti uh, electron doping. Yeah. And so the idea is that the, the tellurium uh, effect or the, uh, I guess, absence of tellurium dopes the system. Right. Um, okay. Um, right. Thanks. And the second thing that I want to ask is that so you sort of in, in the uh, your electronic pneumatic state, like the crystal state, uh, you've got 12.3 angstrom. Mm -hmm. So what's that? I mean, so right, I mean, if you are making comparison with the cuprates, and the cuprates right. has a sort of kind of a, a idea about this full lattice product. So, so here, do you have any kind of picture about the space thing and then how does that change with doping? So um, the period of this particular vectors, uh, let's quickly go to the phase diagram oh, here. So um, as, as well, again, so this system will become CDW. Uh, right, yeah. When you dump more into the system. And according to the TEM study, uh, these are the vectors, <laughs> okay, of the uh, CDW. So this is the real space. So when you move closer to the boundary, it will roughly become longer and longer. So right here at the point seven, you already have roughly more than six times of the unique cell. Um, and so when it's not surprising, I think if you move to around here, you would get something around 7.5 or eight, and we cross here. So the question is why you get the 12? And I think it's, it will depends on what is the CDW ground state around this room. This region. 
and it's probably not gonna be linear. It's probably gonna go like fast, like to this direction. Okay, so I guess are you sort of is this Q kind of uh, adiabatically connected to the the so because I understand that the CDW Q is related to the Fermi surface testing. Uh, that was one explanation. There's right. there's some debates right now with this uh, with this particular. So the is it correct to then understand this uh, pneumatic block or uh, liquid crystal as a sort of a precursor or incomplete uh, charge density, mm -hmm. or it, it has the same origin? Is that the kind of idea? Because uh, you are connecting the two. Well, so so the nesting though is I can only tell you. Um, well, first of all, uh, it will work nicely for this particular doping, uh, point five, because yeah, yeah. then you've got a commensurate system. And so it must, it's much easier to construct the supercell and then get the band structure. But then these are incommensurate, and then it becomes very difficult to compare with the Fermi surface. Uh, and then also they are sort of in not the, like sort of 45 degrees to the square, the Fermi surface nesting vector. So it's not so clear that they will work. Uh, and this is some debate right now. Um, but I can only tell you if, because we, we have the Fermi surface by as, uh, PBI units. So if I make the connection, it is close. I can only tell you it's close, but it's not very sure that uh, nesting is the, the reason. But, but it's related to the CDW. You know, Sure. Thank you. Okay, one more question. You can, you can add. Let's take this again. Okay. 